I'm just in here piddling, waiting for you guys to come. So glad you're here today. It is day three of our Advent celebration as we look forward and focus on Jesus and his birthday. So let's pray and get started. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you for the sun shining. Thank you for the birds singing, God. Thank you so much for all of our blessings. Lord, thank you that we can be together this morning and just focus on the reason for Christmas. And God, that is your son that you sent to die to save us. And so, Lord, as we look, um, look at the history, as we look at why we celebrate Christmas at the birth of Jesus, we also look forward to his return. And so, Father, as we look into our lesson today, Lord, I just ask that you be with us, open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as you know, we are in week one, hope. The word hope is our focus, right? And so hope, if you remember, we talked about yesterday, hope is knowing, expecting something better is coming, right? Better days ahead. Something better is coming. Something better is ahead of us. So we have hope. And today, our lesson is hope promised. So before we get into day three, I want to let's read the passage together. The last two days, I've asked you to read the passages with your families. Today, I would like to read that together. So if you have your Bible... If you will turn with me to Isaiah chapter 11. I'm just going to mark my book right there. Isaiah chapter 11. So let's see. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Dezebach, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and Ruth, the Dezebach, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, 1st and 1st Kings, Dezebach, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Dezebach, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Isaiah, there it is. Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, where are you, keep going, Isaiah, there we are, Isaiah chapter 11, wasn't it, yep, Isaiah chapter 11, so chapter 11, remember that's the big number 11, I'm going to show you in my Bible, Isaiah, so see we're in the book of Isaiah, and chapter 11, that's the big number 11, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5. So read along with me. If you can't read, just open up those ears and listen, okay? It says, reign of the Davidic king. Then a shoot will grow from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight will be in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge. By what he sees with his eyes, he will not execute justice by what he hears with his ears, but he will judge the poor righteously and execute justice for the oppressed of the land. He will strike the land with a scepter from his mouth, and he will kill the wicked with a command from his lips. Righteousness will be a belt around his hip. Faithfulness will be a belt around his waist. Wow. So, hmm. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. I wonder who that he is that we're talking about. 
So let's look at our devotion. And this is our um, Jesus has come from the Daily Grace Company. It says, how do you feel when you have to wait for something? Excited? Frustrated? Worried? It says, yesterday we talked about God's promise of a Savior who would save the world from sin, right? We had hope in creation. Remember? God's people were really, really, really excited for the promised Savior to arrive, but they had to wait a long, long time. There were hundreds of years between God's promise to Adam and Eve and when Jesus finally arrived. So you imagine... You have to wait in line for just a few minutes at the Walmart, right? They waited hundreds of years for this promised Savior. In this time of waiting, oh, sin. Oh, sin was such a big problem. Kind of like it is today. People chose not to listen to God, and they did things that God said not to do. Because you know, that's what sin is, right? Anything we say or do or think. It is not what God says to do. People were angry, and they were mean, and they were hateful to one another. Oh, all of this made God really, really sad. He kept having to give his children consequences for their disobedience. Now, kids, listen to me. You know how when you do something wrong and mom makes you go sit and time out, or sometimes you have to explain it, or... Sometimes you lose things. That's a consequence for the choice you made, right? Well, that, that's what it's saying here. God had to keep giving his children consequences for their disobedience, not obeying. Even though these were some dark days, God still wanted his people to see hope was lighting up their future. He gave them another promise. Are you ready for this? He said their nation was like an empty field right now. And nothing good was moving from it. But one day, oh, one day, something new was going to grow from that emptiness. Like a new shoot growing off of an old dead stump. That's what we just read in Isaiah, right? A new king was going to arise. The king, that's with a capital K, if you notice, would be unlike any other king. And if you notice when we were reading, if you were reading along with me, that spirit was with a capital S and that king was with a capital K. Hmm. A new king was going to rise. This king would be unlike any other king had ever been or ever would be except this king. He would be faithful to God and he would never, ever sin. Come on, you know who we're talking about, right? Who, ne who is the only one that has never, ever sinned? He would be wise, and he would be kind, and he would be just. This king would lead God's people to love and obey God. Love and obey. Hmm. All the people rejoiced in these hopeful words. This is the king they wanted, and it's the king they needed, really. Their hope was renewed, and they held on to this hope tightly as they continue to wait for their king, who we know as Jesus. Even when God's people were disobeying and he had to give them consequences, he was also encouraging them with hope that a Savior was coming. You know, and, and it's kind of like, again, when you get in trouble, maybe you, maybe you didn't clean your room, or maybe you were mean to your sibling, right? And there was a consequence. Maybe you had to sit and time out. Or maybe you lost your game for the day. Your parents still gave you hope, right? Because you're going to get it back. And, and, you know, I know used to, when I used to have to punish Julia for, for consequence, for, for things she had done, choices she had made, and there was a consequence, I would always remind her that I loved her. I'll never stop loving you no matter what you do. So there's hope in that love, right? Well, that's kind of what God was doing here. Even though he had to discipline and he had to give them consequences, he still encouraged them. Why do you think God did this? Hmm. What does 
is jealous of that guy. I don't know about you, but I know that he loves me big because he doesn't give up on me. And sometimes I just really mess up, right? Hmm. We may face times when people let us down. Sometimes leaders of God's people let them down by disobeying him. Hmm. Has this ever happened to you? Has anyone ever let you down by the choices that they made? Could Jesus be your hope in these hard times? Like he was the hope for God's people? The answer is yes. Jesus is our hope. Because Jesus loves us so much that he came and he, he gave his life for us so that we can know that there are better things coming. Remember we talked about heaven, no sadness, no hurting, no fussing and fighting, no sickness, no deployment, no divorce, no leaving one another, no death, no having to say goodbye. <laughs> Hope of better things coming. That's because of Jesus. Jesus did that for us. So, Today, as you pray together as a family, there's two things I want you to remember. I want you to ask God to help you wait in areas you are feeling impatient. Mm, waiting. Patient. Holy Spirit. Hmm. And thank God for promising King Jesus who would lead people to love and obey God. And if you're feeling extra excited today about Advent, Draw me a picture about what you learned today. I'd love to see your artwork. Get mom to send me a picture. And I'll send the prize in the mail, right? Okay, so there's your challenge for today. Some things to pray about, an action, something to do to help us be focused on Advent as we wait for King Jesus to return again. Oh, I love this. This is so exciting. All right, and then here's our ornament for today. Week one, day three, hope. Right? Hope promised. Can y'all see that? Let me get a little closer. Yeah, hope promised. And on the back it says, This king would be unlike any other king. Not like King David, not like King Saul. Whew, thankfully. Um, not like any of the other kings. King Jesus. The king. Right? Alright, so I'm gonna hang our ornament here on our tree. Oh, our little tree is looking so pretty. I love it. And now, for our tree over here, today, I chose a candy cane. Yeah, we're just going to decorate this tree right on up as we celebrate the Savior that was born in Bethlehem. Right? Okay, so that's our day three of week one. Hope is our focus word. Um, did I did not cover our memory verse. Let's see. Our memory verse is Romans 5, 5. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Who gave us the Holy Spirit? God did. That's right. All right, guys. I hope you have a great day. Remember, hey, please be talking about Advent as a family. Um, Please be working on these memory verses. Please think about what you've learned today. And remember, Ask God to help you with something that you're having to be patient for. And hey, also remember, who's your person? Who's your person that you're praying for right now? Maybe you don't know if they know Jesus. Maybe you know that they don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe they don't have a church where they worship. Who's that person that you're praying for every day and that you're going to invite to celebrate Christmas service with you? Celebrate the birth of Jesus. I hope you've chosen someone. Pray for that person every day. All right, guys, I'll see you back here tomorrow. It'll be day four of Advent. Kissing hands. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.